Hi guys, in this video we'll be uh, formatting our SD card so that I can put on a Raspberry Pi operating system. So let's get started really quickly, but before we do, I want to say that this task can seem a little daunting at first, but as uh, you progress through your development with your Raspberry Pi, you're going to see that you'll need to do this uh, quite a quite a few times. Uh, quite a few amount of times, I don't know, anyways. <laughs> so I'll start by doing command space to open up the spotlight search and then I'll type in disk utility. This is going to bring up the GUI or the graphical user interface for disk utility. And I see that my SD card is here, I'll take it out real quick and then I'll put it, put it back in. So this right here is my um, actual hard drive that's on the computer and right here is the SD card that I just put in right now. What we want to do is go ahead and erase this. We need to format it correctly. So I'll type in what I want my SD card to be named. It's In this case it's KaiPi. And um, then I'll put the format as an MSDOS type format. And I'll click erase. And just like that we have erased and formatted our SD card so that we can now write over it with an operating system. So click done, sweet, we're pretty awesome. Now let's actually get the operating system and we can do this by going to um, Raspberry Pi right here. This is raspberrypi.org forward slash downloads and alternatively if you didn't know how to do that you just Google Raspberry Pi OS. Just like that, and it'll lead you to this page anyways, but like I said, it's raspberrypi.org forward slash downloads. If you buy your SD card with your Raspberry Pi, it'll likely come pre-installed with an operating system called Noobs. Um, but we're not Noobs, so we're going to be using a different operating system. Um, in this case, we'll be using Raspbian. Raspbian Jesse, Wheezy, uh, for now it doesn't really matter we're gonna just get Jesse so I do suggest downloading the torrent uh, just really quickly a torrent is you know uh, you're downloading from your peers and it allows you to download not only faster in some cases but also if your download gets interrupted for some reason uh, you can continue where you left off rather than having to start the download all over um, and like you would have to with a regular download so now I've already downloaded it and I've downloaded it into this directory over here called KaiJunk on my desktop and I'll delete this for now. So we have a zip image or a zip file so that's not really helpful to us right now in the way that it is because we can't use it so I'll open up terminal. Hi terminal, let me just, whatever. I'll messing stuff up. This isn't the computer I usually use. It has some different settings on it, so there's my excuse for the day. Alright, so I'm going to navigate to this directory. I'll do pwd to print the current working directory that I'm in. I'll change directory to the desktop, and inside that desktop is another directory called kaijunk. And if I do ls to list what's inside of it, I can see both graphically and uh, textually what is within this directory so we can see it right here and we can see it right here I have this zip file that I want to unzip so I'll pass in the command unzip and then I'll type in the file name if I just type in a couple of characters and then click tab it'll autocomplete for me um, what the file name is it's really helpful and I'll click enter and this might take a second but what it's doing is it's uncompressing this zip file so you see inflating 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 I actually had to remake this tutorial because <laughs> I was trying to type in commands and I was pushing enter and it wasn't working and I was like huh um, I guess I have to there's like a process running so I guess I have to end the process and when I did end the process I didn't realize that I kinda had stopped this um, this inflation short and then I uploaded a <laughs> a partial file onto my uh, SD card. It's not good. Alright, so quite some time later because I'm using a kind of a slow computer. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear it now, but it's starting to toast up a little bit. I have, I did end this process uh, prematurely just because I had the image already, so I figured, hey, let's just get it over with. And um, 
if you look here, it uncompressed the image with the exact same name as it has here, except uh, with a different extension, .img. And what I did was I renamed it to Raspbian instead because this is kind of like difficult to keep typing in the terminal over and over. So just for um, an easier reference, I renamed it to just Raspbian.image. And now what we can do is actually start uploading this onto our SD card. And we can do that by first I'll clear the screen by typing in control L. And I'll do disk util list. And this is going to um, show us in the terminal every disk that is on our system right now, as well as their partitions. And if we just went into the uh, GUI like we did at the beginning of the tutorial, we, uh, we see the exact same information, but this is just on our... Um, this is just on our terminal now, so hey, that's cool. I need to unmount everything here, so I'll start by doing uh, sudo unmount disk1, and I'll click enter. And I know it's disk1 because right here it says disk1, and so if I do unmount, and the first time that you run sudo after X amount of minutes, you're going to have to enter in your password. Um, sorry. First, you pass in the disk util, unmount disk1. Uh, let's try unmount disk for this. Just, hey, just cuz. So, if we do sudo disk util unmount disk1 disk instead, it's going to unmount all the volumes on disk1 rather than doing it individually, which was what I was trying to do. If we just wanted to take off, uh, unmount a partition on a disk, for instance, like, I only wanted to unmount the first partition on disk 1. I could have just typed in unmount disk 1, S1, push enter. But since we did the unmount disk right here, it unmounted all the partitions on the disk. I'll click control L. And now what that allows us to do is, um, now we can start writing to the disk. So, again, let's see, PWD, I'm in Kaijunk already. So I've navigated to the directory where the file, the, the disk, <clears throat> sorry, the image file that I want to upload onto the SD card is. So now what I can do is just pass in the command that will allow me to write to the SD card. And again, I'll do super user, super user do, that's what sudo stands for, dd input file is equal to the name of that file that we want to put onto the SD card. So in our case, it's raspbian, raspbian.img, and then we'll type in the output file, or where we want to write to. If we scroll up right here, we don't want to screw this up, otherwise we're going to write over our um, our system's uh, operating system. So I won't have Mac on my computer anymore. So you want to make sure that you get this path correct. So forward slash dev forward slash disk one. So the path in this case is going to be forward slash dev forward slash disk one. And instead of just doing um, a disk like right here, what we're going to do forward slash disk one, we're going to do uh, our disk. So what this does is it skips over the phase where we have to write to the buffer. And if you don't include that R, I trust me, I think you guys are going to be regretting every single life decision that you ever made. So just like that, and I'll pass in the last argument, which is block size is equal to one meg, push enter. And just like that, we've begun. Uh, writing over our SD card with this new uh, Raspbian image that we have. And we're not quite sure right now if it's working, right? Because I don't see anything happening on the page. Well, what you can do is push Control T, and it's going to show you the amount of bytes that it transferred. And if we look here, and we want to get an indication as to how long this is going to take, well, we can see that it's writing uh, 75 million bytes a second, roughly. And this translates to, let me give me a second here, uh, this is actually transferring at 7.5 million bytes a second, which means 7.5 megabytes a second. So one megabyte is a million bytes. And on our file exists, um, let's see, raspbian.img is 3.93 gigabytes, which is 1,000... Uh, <laughs> so one gigabyte is 1,000 megabytes. So that means that it's... 1,000 times larger than just a megabyte, so that means that we need to add some zeros up on this right here. So, if I'm transferring at 7.5 megabytes a second, I can roughly get how long it's going to take if I divide that by 
uh, roughly four billion. So just <laughs> yeah, right there, because we see that we have three point three nine three gigabytes, which is going to be four billion bytes. So you divide four billion by seven point five million, and that'll give you how long this whole transferring thing is going to take. Alright guys, be sure to like and subscribe and I'll be uploading some more tutorials in the future.